This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 7, Section 1, Part 2, Ions. So in the last section, you learned the valence electrons. You learned how to draw those Lewis dot diagrams. Well, how, do th how does that help us figure out how that atom becomes an ion? Well, first, pause the video, read as you write, fill in those blanks, and then play to hear my words. So no matter how many valence electrons an atom has, it's going to want to acquire eight electrons in its outermost energy level to become stable. So this is what we call the octet rule. Octet meaning eight. So all atoms want eight valence electrons in some way in order to become stable. So they're going to react with each other in some bonding way to acquire or obtain these eight valence electrons. Okay, so it needs to achieve these atoms in order to become ions and then become stable, needs to achieve eight valence electrons in some way. And that's where the ions come into play. So there's two exceptions, however, to that octet rule. And we want to remember that hydrogen and helium only have one energy level. And in that first energy level, you only have a maximum of two electrons. So that's why hydrogen and helium only need two valence electrons in order to be happy. So cations, yes, a cation. So there's two kinds of ions, right? There's going to be a positive ion and there's going to be a negative ion. So instead of just saying positive and negative, chemists like to come up with a terminology. So instead of saying positive ion, they're going to say cation. So what's a cation? A cation is going to come from a metal element that's going to lose electrons. So it's going to be positively charged. So now you're wondering, why do I have a cat down here? Well, if you like cats, cats are positive in your life. If you don't like cats, I got a couple other um, ideas for you to remember how a cat ion is a positive charged ion. I want to also tell you, and it's going to be really important, is that cat ions are going to have the same name as the element it comes from. And uh, we'll do some examples and hopefully you'll understand this. So what's another way to remember a cat ion is positive? Well, a cat ion has a T in it and that T looks like a plus sign. So that plus sign is positive. So that's two ways of remembering um, cat ions are the positive ions, again, coming from metals because they are losing electrons. And there's another way of remembering it. So this is going to be slightly different. I'm going to have you actually listen to me first. Let me explain what's going on and then you can pause the video and copy them in your notes. All right, so let's look at the sodium atom. Here's the structure. So here's our nucleus, let's say, sodium atom, and here's the nucleus, and we have these three energy levels. So two on the first energy level, eight on the second energy level, and then one energy on the third um, energy level, one, one valence electron, right? Since that's our outermost energy level, we have one valence electron. All right, so no matter what, what does sodium need to become stable? That octet rule, it needs eight valence electrons in some way. Well, sodium has two options. It can either lose that one valence electron or gain seven. Now think about that, do a little bit of math. Is it easier to lose one or to gain seven? Hopefully in your mind you're thinking, well, it should be easier to lose one electron. And so that's what happens. So the sodium atom becomes a sodium cation. So let's look at its structure. What happened here? Well, the core electrons, the two uh, on the first energy level and the eight on the second energy level, your core electrons stay as is, but it lost that one outside energy level. It lost its outermost energy level, it lost its valence electron. So because it lost its valence electron, look what it has here. It has now eight valence electrons. So it used to have one, it lost it, and now it has eight. So now it is stable because it lost that one valence electron. So we want to remember that the name sodium though, the atom, because it's a cation, stays sodium. That's going to be really important. So metals tend to keep 
their name as is. So now pause the video and copy in these notes. Okay, so hopefully you paused, you copied in the notes, and hopefully this kind of makes sense to you. Uh, and if it doesn't, again, you can always rewind and kind of listen to me say it again. So I also have you in your notes drawing the atom versus the ion. So a couple things to think about. Look at this atom has three energy levels and it loses that last electron, that one valence electron, and now it only has two energy levels. So that's something to maybe take note of or make sure that you're understanding that the sodium atom is going to be different than the sodium ion it forms when it becomes stable. So let's look at the fact that it's plus one because cations can be plus one, plus two, plus three. It can be different charges, but for sodium, it's always going to be plus one. Well, where does that plus one come from? So let's look at that ion. First thing to notice is that it has 11 protons. So it's going to have 11 positive protons. That's never going to change. But when the atom became an ion, we can add those 10 negative electrons. Hmm. So now this ion has 11 positive protons and it has 10 negative electrons. So if we do the math, that should equal that plus one charge. So this, you don't have to actually know. You're not going to have to do this math because I'm going to show you a pattern on the periodic table. That's why the periodic table is so important and it gives us lots of patterns. And again, the fact that it has more protons than electrons gives us that positive charge. How many more protons does it have? One. That's where the one comes from. So if we look at it as a reaction, we have the sodium atom. It loses electrons, and losing electrons is called that ionization energy. You've heard that term before. And so what happens is you have that sodium ion and an electron kind of off and away, right? It's going to be going somewhere else. <clears throat> so pause, read, and see if you can answer this question. Hopefully you came up with eight, right? Now that it's an ion, it now has eight valence electrons. So this is another example of magnesium now losing two electrons. So notice the equation or the reaction here looks very similar, but now it has a plus two charge. So let's look at why does it have a plus two charge? We're going from the magnesium atom to the magnesium ion. So again, we're going to go back to those protons and electrons. So it has 12 positive protons. It lost two electrons, so it has now 10 negative electrons. Now just do the math. 12 positives plus 10 negatives is going to give us that plus 2. We have two more protons than electrons in our ion. Again, awesome math. And if you're mathematical, that should make sense to you. But if it doesn't, I'm going to show you a pattern. This is just some information on magnesium. And there's that pattern I was telling you about. Look, all of the elements in group one, the alkali metals, they all have one valence electron. And guess what? Now they're all going to have a plus one charge. Group two has two valence electrons. In order for them to become a stable cation, they're all going to lose those two valence electrons and now have a plus two charge. So an anion is the opposite way. It's going to gain electrons. Those elements are nonmetals. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons, and now they're going to become negatively charged, called an anion. Why do I have an onion? Because onion and anion kind of sound similar. Now, this is going to be the tricky part. The ending, though, is going to change. Those atoms, when they become anions, actually change their ending to an IDE ending. And again, we'll do some practice. So this time again, you're going to just listen. And then when I'm done, you're going to pause and uh, copy the notes. All right, so here's our chlorine atom. We have two on our first energy level, eight on our second, seven on our third. All right, same question here, right? What does chlorine need to be stable? Just like every other element, it needs that octet rule. So it needs eight valence electrons. How is it going to do that? Well, again, which way is easier? Losing seven or gaining one? Again, think mathematically. Is it easier to lose seven? Seven things or just to gain one thing? Well, hopefully in your mind you're saying, well, it's probably easier to gain one, and it absolutely is. 
So that chlorine atom now becomes a chloride, an anion, a negative anion. So let's look at that structure. The two and the eight, again, those core electrons stay the same, but now instead of seven, because it gained one, now it has those eight valence electrons. And that changes though the name. So chlorine now changes to chloride, very important. So pause the video and copy down these notes. So again, I'm gonna ask you to draw that atom versus the ion. And again, take note, we have one, two, three. So this is the nucleus and one, two, three energy levels. The ion has three energy levels, but this is what you wanna take notice of. There's seven electrons here, but eight electrons there. That's gonna be the, dis the, uh, the difference. So again, why is it negative one? Let's look at this mathematically. Again, we have 17 protons. Those are positively charged. That's gonna always stay the same. But what happened to chlorine? How many electrons does it have now as an ion? Well, it gained one. So it has 18 electrons. So 17 positive protons plus 18 negative electrons is gonna give us a total of negative one. So in this case, we actually have one more electron than proton, and that's where that negative one comes from. And guess what? You're not gonna have to do the mathematics. You're gonna see a pattern. Voila, so here's chlorine. Chlorine has seven e valence electrons to start with, just like everybody else in group 17, the halogens, and they're all gonna have a negative one charge. Group 16 has six valence electrons. Um, it's gonna have a negative two charge when it gains two electrons to be stable. And again, group 15 is gonna start with five valence electrons, uh, gaining three to become that anion with a negative three charge. So this should look very similar to what you've seen before, but now it's the opposite. Now we have the atom and the electron here is on the left. So that chlorine gained an gained an electron. This is actually called electron affinity. So you might hear that uh, later on as well. But electron affinity is the affinity, the, 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 um, uh, the wanting of those electrons. Um, and notice now again that the chlorine changes to chloride. So repeat after me because when these atoms become anions, this is what you should be familiar with as far as the endings. How do those endings change? So here we go. Fluorine changed to fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide. All right, hopefully you got those. How about oxide, sulfide, nitride, and phosphide? So for the most part, you're taking away the I-N-E and you're replacing it with the I-D-E. So pretty simple, but some are a little tricky and you'll, you'll hear them and get used to it. This is just some information about those anions in seawater, which I thought was interesting. And now let's look at that blank periodic table at the back of your packet, right? So, so far you should have your um, group numbers and you should have valence electrons. Now we're gonna add those charges. So group one is gonna have a plus one, group two has a plus two, three through 12, just like the um, valence electrons, they're gonna vary. And we're also gonna talk about some of these elements are gonna have multiple charges. Group 13 is gonna be plus three. Now group 14 is a little tricky. Group 14, since it's right in the middle of eight, some of those elements are gonna actually um, give up four electrons and some are going to gain four electrons. So that can kind of go either way, it depends on the situation. Group 15, negative three, 16, negative two, 17, negative one, and of course, group 18 does not have a charge because they're already happy. And I wanna remind you that helium is happy with two electrons, just like hydrogen only needs two as well. Uh, charge always has a positive negative and a number associated with it. However, sometimes you see it the other way. Sometimes you'll see the number and then the positive or negative sign. It really doesn't matter as long as you have the positive negative and a value, a number associated with it. So this is what your periodic table should look like in the back. And you might wanna add here, metals stay the same name and non-metals change to IDE just as a reference. All right, we will see you in class.